makes the sun to rise day by day. The moon and stars to shine by night. His mercy unfolds through all generations. And when I see his faithfulness displayed through good all the time. God is good all the time and His mercy endures forever. And I love this song because it's a praise and worship song and um, talking about the goodness of God, yeah. how, you know, He makes the sun to rise day by day and the moon and stars mm. to shine by night. He never gives up on us, does He? He never does. He never. You know, every day when you wake up in the morning, you expect the sun to be there. Yeah. Right? You don't expect the moon to be there in the morning. Yeah. I mean, you expect the sun. That shows that God is faithful. He is. For so long, He has just been, you know, doing the same thing over and over again. The sun in the morning and during the day and in the night, the moon. Mm, he's faithful. He is faithful. He is a good God. And that's what we've been talking about. God being such a good God and a faithful God. That's what mm -hmm. I love about Him. He is faithful. And how we can be so thankful yeah, for all right. His faithfulness. Yeah. And we welcome you to another episode of Just Like Him. It's uh, such a blessing to be here and uh, encourage you with the Word of God. Because God's Word truly, it is so encouraging, it's full of life. Mm. It gives you a reason to live every yeah, day. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Let's get into the Word of God. We've been talking about thankfulness and how important it is to be a thankful person. 
in mm. your life. That's what we've been doing all this yeah. time. Yeah. And you know, um, like we were talking about, last time we got into more of, you know, unthankfulness and how, you know, unthankfulness can be such a dangerous thing in a person's mm. life. Like we took the example of the children of Israel and how they were so unthankful, even when God did so much of good to them, every time they were really, you know, they, they complained and they murmured yeah. and they always forgot, you know, of the past victories that God had done for them. Mm. That's a very dangerous life to That's what it leads to, to. That's what unthankfulness leads to because yeah. you forget the goodness of the Lord and you don't remember to thank Him mm. for it. That's right. And we took that scripture in Psalm 78, how you talk about the goodness of God and you show His works to the generations mm. to come by talking of His faithfulness. God has been so good. And, um, you know, you can just tell, you know, if you're an older person, you can tell younger people how God has been faithful to you mm. and He's been so good to you. He's healed you. He's That's provided right. for you. That will just bring this spark of thankfulness into them and cause them to be grateful mm. to the Lord. Yeah, that's right. And uh, today we just want to talk about how, how do you apply words of thanksgiving when you're facing a troubling situation? Mm. And I don't think there's any one of us here who has ever been in a place where we've never faced something um, troubling, something disturbing. All of us have been in that position. Yeah. And you know, as a child of God, the promise that we have is that we can overcome those situations. That's the promise that God has given us in His Word. Now, um, you know, the Bible, there's a scripture, and let's read that. I think that's a really good scripture that encourages us and shows us what we ought to do when we're facing a troubling situation. And I believe this is truly going to encourage you. If you're facing something really hard today, I believe that these words will speak to you and show you exactly what you ought to do. And this can be found in um, Philippians 4, verse 6 and 7. We're just going to read that from here. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. This is what Philippians 4, 6 says. It says, be careful for nothing. What an amazing statement. You know, God mm. says not to be careful for anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, so let's, um, let's go into that first part. It says, be careful for nothing. What in the world does that mean? Be careful for nothing. It just means don't worry about anything in Take your no life. Thought for your Take life. no thought for your or life. Worry, worry, yeah. Exactly. And I don't, and you know, if you read that for the first time, you might say, man, there's no way that you can ever be in a situation and not ever be careful. Mm. And we've all been in a place of worrying and, you know, concerned about something. But you know, God's not, in the sense, this verse is not just saying, well, don't think, just, just ignore that you don't have a situation or something. He didn't say that. Because in the next part, he says, in everything, in any situation that you're going through, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. In other words, you yeah. can do one of two things. Yeah. You can constantly be worried about a situation and talk about it and rehearse about it, all the problems that you're facing, or you can, in, in that situation, give thanks to the Lord mm. and praise Him and say, Lord, I come before you with this problem I'm facing, with this need that I have, and I thank you for answering it. That's right. You can do one mm. of two things. Be in worried fact, you know, that, That's exactly what we're talking about. Is When you're facing a troubling situation, you have actually the, the ability to pray the answer in that situation, mm. right? So for example, how do you pray the answer? Well, maybe you're going through, maybe you need um, wisdom and understanding. You know, maybe you are facing, maybe you have an exam or something like that you want to face. And how do you, maybe it's, it's troubling you. You know, I know the feeling like, you know, when you have an exam and you just, you know, in, in the end, you just have so much to study and there's so much you're trying to finish up. And in fact, I'll just remind you of a story that happened to me. Um, when, when I was in school, we had just finished an exam and, um, and I was not very sure if I had done really well. So I called my friend up and then she says, um, we get the results, I think, a few days. And then she says, uh, I don't think it's really good. She says, I'm not sure if your results are you know, up, up there. And that really got me disturbed. I was like, Oh man, I was really, really upset at that moment. 
And so I go and I, and I speak with my mother and I just you know, tell her that this is the situation. And right there, while I'm crying and you know, thinking about this, she immediately takes me to the scripture. In Joshua, there's a beautiful scripture. Joshua 1.5 where it says, uh, where, where God is speaking to Joshua and he says, you know, there's not any man going to fail you. Yeah. Right? No man can fail you. In fact, I'll just read the exact words, but it says there in Joshua 1.5, these are the words that she spoke to me when I was not sure, you know, how I was going to get through and what these results might mean. And this is what, uh, you know, she encouraged me with. She said, there shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Amen. And this was the part that really got to me, where God is saying, I will not fail you nor forsake you. Yeah. So while I was facing that worry and all that situation, immediately these words just spoke to me. Immediately I just started saying, God, you're not going to fail me. You're not going to forsake me. Even though right now I'm feeling like this and I don't know what's going to happen, I know that you're not going to fail me. And mm. sure enough, you know, God did not fail me. I really, mm. you know, got through the test and got through the exam and my results were okay. And if I had sat and worried, maybe the situation would have been different. Yeah. I don't know. And it would have been your attitude also yeah. that would have, um, the way you would have seen your results that yeah. would have, you know, caused the thankfulness or, yeah, thankfulness to the Lord for His goodness just um, reminds you of God's faithfulness and that He will never fail you. Yeah. That was remembering God's faithfulness. That's right. I will not fail you. I will not fail you. That's, yeah. Those are the exact words that just spoke to me so much. God just kept telling me, Shama, I'm not going to fail you. I'm not going to forsake you. And I don't know how many times I had to repeat that to myself. I just repeated that, God, you are not going to fail me. And the more I kept saying His word instead of what my head was saying, it just changed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. My heart was at peace, you know, after I, I took God's words. In fact, yeah. this man Joshua, to whom God said, I will not fail you nor forsake you, he was one of the leaders after Moses. Mm. And he was a new leader because he was from a younger generation. And God, God told Joshua, as I was with Moses, so am I going to be with you. Yeah. Because this was a huge task that he had to take over, leading the children of Israel. In, uh, through the wilderness and into the promised land. I mean, there were so many people that he had to mm. lead out. And, but he had these assuring words from God. As I was with Moses, so I'm going to be mm. with you. I am the same God that was mm. then and I'm still yeah. going to be here. I am your God. That's I right. am That's the right. God of I am. Mm. And so these words uh, reassured Joshua that God is never going to leave him. Yeah. That the same power that he worked when Moses was there to bring the children out, uh, bring the children of Israel out is the same power mm. that I have. Yeah, and that, that's exactly what I had to do. You know, I just, like, like we were saying, we were asking the question in the beginning, how do you apply words of thanksgiving when you're facing a troubling situation? Mm. And so what I did was when, when, when the scripture was shown to me in Joshua 1.5, I will not fail you nor forsake you. This is how I applied it to my life. You know, I'm not Joshua, but I still am a child of God and I can take the same words mm. that, you know, was spoken to Joshua. And I said, Father, I just want to thank you that you will not fail me. You yeah. will not forsake me. That's right. I kept repeating that. I said, thank you that you're not going to fail me or forsake mm. me. And I just kept repeating that over and over again. Yeah. And that's exactly what Philippians 4, 6 and 7 is saying. It says not to be careful for nothing you know, for anything that you're facing. So it says, you know, with whatever situation that you're facing, immediately start thanking God for the answer that you want to see in that situation. Mm. So maybe if it's sickness, how do you apply words of thanksgiving that you can say, Lord, I thank you in your word, you said that you took upon yourself all my sicknesses and all my diseases and all my pain so that yeah. I might receive healing. I'm just going to thank you for healing. You just start thanking Him, Lord, I'm so thankful for healing. If you can't say it with your own mouth, you can maybe ask somebody else to say it for you. Just start telling them, okay, Lord, I thank you that she is healed. I thank you that he is healed by the stripes of Jesus. Yeah. You can start doing that when you're, you're facing a situation. You're focusing on the Lord's goodness. That's right. You're magnifying yeah. it like that scripture we took. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name. To magnify the Lord means you don't just make Him bigger than He already is because He is big. Mm. To magnify Him means to focus on Him so that everything else around you becomes, it fades out. Yeah. But the Lord becomes the focal point and you're focusing on His faithfulness. That's you're right. focusing on His goodness and on His kindness that He will never leave you 
And in mm -hmm. a case of um, sickness, you know, you can take that other promise from Exodus where it talks and says, Lord, you will bless my food and my water. That's good. And you take away sickness mm. and disease from me. Yeah. And that reassures you so that you can um, say, Lord, I'm going to eat this food. I'm going to bless it. Mm. I'm not going to curse my food. I'm going to bless it and say, Lord, you bless this food and this water and you mm. have promised to take all sickness That's and right. disease away from me. Yeah, and instead of you know just saying, God, heal me, heal me, please heal me, you can change your prayers and start saying, Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you that healing is my, it's, it's my uh, covenant right to be healed. And so I'm gonna thank you for healing. You know, like we said, how people really appreciate words of thanksgiving. Even God is the same way. You know, he, appreciate thanks, he appreciates thanksgiving. So you can just say, Lord, I thank you for healing me. Mm. I thank you that I'm already healed. I thank you that you've taken sickness away from me. Like, you know, Shalom was saying about, mm. you know, your food and your water, how it is blessed. And when you're eating your food, you can say, Father, I thank you that my food and my water is blessed. Mm. Use thanksgiving, you know, when you're communicating to God. It's, it's such a beautiful attitude and mm. a wonderful attitude. Mm. And you know what the promise is? When you start thanking the Lord that way, this is what God has promised in verse 7. So while you're facing any situation and you start thanking the Lord for the answer, this is what God says that He's going to do. He says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Man, mm. I mean, how many of us just want to be at peace at all times? Yeah. And God has promised that. He says, when you just bring your request to Him, when you bring your, you know, all the troubles and all, but you say, Lord, I'm thanking you for the answer in this situation. Yeah. I thank you that I'm already healed. Mm. I thank you that you, um, you know, have, you're not going to fail me. You're not going to forsake me. That you are not a respecter of persons. Yeah, you're not a respecter you know, of that's persons. something that sometimes we think, oh Lord, you heal that person, then why won't you heal mm. me? Sometimes we think like that. Yeah. But you can take this promise in Romans chapter 2, verse 11. It says, God is no respecter of persons. Yeah. What He did for somebody else, He will surely do for you. That's right. If He healed in the past, and you can refer in the Bible, there are so many places where Jesus went around healing people. Mm. If He did that then, He will still do it Definitely. today. Because He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yeah. And when you start praying like that, you can believe that God's peace is just going to pass all your understanding. Mm. You might be saying these things, Father, I thank you that you're not going to fail me. I thank you that you're not going to forsake me. But in your head, your head is just battling and saying, man, that's not true. I mean, you're still sick. You're still, you know, you're still unsure. Maybe you're going to fail. Maybe something's going to happen. But immediately refuse to believe that. Just keep saying the word. Just keep saying, Father, I thank you. you know, even though my head's saying this, I'm going to believe what your word says. Your mm. word is the truth. You yeah. know, my head can lie and can say all kinds of things, but your word is the truth. Because feelings are subject mm. to change all the time. And you can't base your life on feelings, that's for yeah. sure. I mean, if you did, then every day in the morning you'd say, well, I'm not going to work today. I just don't feel like going, so I'm just going to be in bed. Well, you mm. can't do that. You can't yeah. depend on your feelings. Yeah. And it's the same with God's word. Yeah. You know, when you, when you take His word, just refuse to believe what your feelings are saying. Not that you're denying it. No. You're just believing God's word to bring the answer in that situation. Yeah. And your feelings will line up with the mm -hmm. word because our okay. bodies, they respond to the words that we say. That's right. Right? Yeah. And so as you say the word, God's peace is going to pass all your understanding. Mm -hmm. You can believe that today. I, I just truly believe that, you know, God is healing you out there. And maybe maybe you don't know Jesus. That's That's something that... Um, is so important for every person is to know who Jesus is. You know, Jesus Christ is a friend and He died on the cross. You know, he, he suffered one of the most horrible deaths you could imagine. You know, on the cross, He was out there rejected and He was lonely and He, he, was, he was completely in pain. You know, when you just think about it, He was in pain and, you know, at that point, nobody was there for Him. But you know, He did all that just for you because He loved you so much right. and because He wants to, He wanted to have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. So today, if you want to receive Jesus in your heart and He wants to be your best friend, you can pray a simple prayer like this. Just repeat it. I'm Shalom will repeat it and you can say along. Let's say it together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe, I believe that you died on the cross for me. That you died on the cross for me and rose again on the third day. And rose again on the third day to give me a new life. To give me a new life. 
I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to come into my heart. Change my life. Change my life. Forgive me of all the wrong things I've done. Forgive me of all the wrong things I've done. I now make you my Lord and Savior. I now make you my Lord and Savior. Thank you for being my best friend. Thank you for being my best friend. From this day, from this day, I'm going to live my life for you. I'm going to live my life for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Believe that today Jesus Christ has come to live in your heart and He wants to just fill you with His peace like this word talks about. So enjoy God's goodness and His loving kindness knowing that Jesus Christ is your best friend.